actually ask why we have to pay for heating at all because we have energy, uh, the sun, waves, wind that we can make energy from. Let's talk seriously about terrible... things like a basic income scheme, about restructuring things for the climate catastrophe mm, world and that. actually have a proper debate about what kind of economy we want to have. All right. And we never have that discussion, and I'm up for it any time. We've got to get away. Complete no, not enough peg. No, not not if not if we're going to have new oil fields. We can't. We cannot afford to take any more fossil fuel out of the ground. It's as simple as that. You know, if we were having this discussion a few years ago, we'd probably be talking about insulate Britain, who were closing roads and things like that at the time. Now, all I can say is, if we'd listened to them, right, we would be in a very different situation for people's homes and heating and the fuel crisis. We didn't listen to them. We just talked about how they were disrupting us and uh, being difficult rather than actually listening to the questions. The problem, so, and I'm going to come to you here again first, Peg, because you're, you're the Green Party person in a way, or formally well, anyway. Formally. Uh, we've got 10 billion still to pay, and if we pay that, it's 80% of our aid budget. Well, it is, but there's a question about how big the aid budget is. So it's 80% of that particular budget. Now, if the aid budget was bigger, it wouldn't necessarily be 80% of it. Um, and, in fact, we've lowered down our aid budget. And it won't come as any surprise, Jeremy, that I say a bit like Graham was saying, I don't think we can afford not to do this. You know, I think we have to really look at the way uh, decisions are made, the way governments uh, work when it comes to climate change, because this is not just another issue. This is putting it bluntly, whether or not the human race can survive on this planet mm. into, into the future. And we've got to do something. And I know and I understand that loads of people are concerned about the, the situation here. I mean, you know, mortgages going up, the cost of heating our homes, food food banks, you know, I, I totally get that and, uh, you know, I totally understand that. But what I would say is even if you kind of go with that, we've got to sort out here first, it is not in our interest not to do this, right? I live in Leeds where we have suffered from floods over and over, whole areas. People can't get insurance on their homes. Uh, people getting really ill when the heat went up to over 40 degrees last year. But, but paying you know, this money doesn't stop flooding in Leeds. No, it doesn't. It but might do something in 200 years. But we've got to start doing it now. We are heading to oh, between two and three degrees warmth by the end of this century. Are okay? we? Uh, potentially. That's what the, okay, the scientists thought... said before, that they, it's not as bad as they were worried, but they're still saying potentially two mm. degrees. And two degrees effectively means that huge parts of the world are not going to be inhabitable. Well, places like southern Sp Spain is already becoming... If you a think there's place. a lot of people True. trying to come here now, yeah. right? Wait until all we right. start getting climate Dawn. migration. So, oh, not to you just say we've had it because we've but got... We are do but, but, Peg, we are doing our bit. We're doing as much as we can in this country. No, I we're think not at doing the moment. as much as we can, Dawn. We're but... absolutely not doing as much as we can. And the truth of the matter is the reasons why we need to tackle climate change are actually really similar to the reasons why loads of us uh, are struggling to heat our homes. It's because we have put all our energy and all our uh, emphasis into an economy that's based on fossil fuels um, and that has allowed uh, companies and fossil fuel companies to do whatever they want, causing a lot of these problems and, and in the name of, of development and assuming that everything that is about so could increasing we get... the economy is good and mm. the reality is that our planet cannot sustain so, you're, that. You're the expert. I mean, that was sort of like, you know, literally all huddled in bed Maybe in the dark. Too so advanced. Well, I think that's wrong, Jeremy, to say, you know, it's kind of like either we have some of the benefits of modern life or we go back to the past. I think what we're actually saying is let's have a different kind of future and a future with renewables is actually loads better. We can all, you know, I would actually ask why we have to pay for heating at all because we have energy, uh, the sun, waves, wind that we can make energy from. Let's talk seriously terrible... about things like a basic income scheme, about restructuring things for the climate catastrophe mm. world. The world is changing, politicians... But that's not going to... The, the problem with up. this is it's not going to happen overnight. Steve, it does occur to me that if we get growth, which everyone seems to want... Mm. Well, actually, can I challenge that? You don't want it. Well, not everybody wants well, growth. Yeah, I was going to say, we, we, I know what growth does. It causes want, traffic jams. I want a different type of economy. OK, so. all right. Um, yeah, so I think I, I, I would say one of the things that we need to move on from in this country is an assumption that uh, everybody thinks all growth is good I was say and that. actually have a proper debate about what kind of economy we want to have. All right. And we never have that discussion, and I'm up for it any time. We've got to go to our break. We're, we're talking in a moment.